Welcome to another fly fishing workshop with me, Lee Pond. You guys have been leaving comments for us, which is great, and we really do appreciate that. But the main one that I keep on getting asked all the time, even though we've covered it on, on, on previous videos, is the dry fly setup. Exactly what to do as far as the spacing is concerned, and the, uh, the way I do it and the way I put it together. So that's what we're going to do today, show you how we put this whole thing together. Let me show you my setup first and foremost and the spacings of the flies. I've already got this one set up, but I will go through the knots with you and show you how I do my knots. There's a few different ways of doing them. I'm going to show you the way I do it. It works, so why not? So, that's, uh, that's my first fly. My first fly is around about six foot from the fly leader itself and I attach it just with a half blood knot. That's all it is, just straight onto the loop. Six pound fully mill is running straight through. I don't have a tapered leader or anything. It's just six pound all the way through. Fluorocarbon so that it sinks below the surface, obviously degrease, etc., etc. We've run through that in, one, in a previous video. So, to the first fly. I'm not gonna do it in feet and inches. I'm gonna do it just as a, as a measurement with my arms because you know it's just a lot simpler to do it. So there we are, it's not quite a full armful, so that is probably around about six foot, I'd say. Six foot to the first fly there anyway, 100%. Second fly, slightly less, around about five foot. And then the last fly, same again, around about five foot. And that's all you need to know. Now, but as I said to you, that these are full uh, full blood knots I'm putting on my droppers. A lot of people use a 4 turn water knot. It's just something that I've been brought up with. I'm going to show you the tying of it um, because it does, the presentation on that is slightly different. It sticks out slightly more than a, than a, than a, a 4 turn water knot. It actually sticks out from the side. As I say, I'm going to run through that with you in a minute so you can see what, um, what I'm doing there. The length of those droppers is around about 8 inches. I don't keep them too long. And I know that if you're changing flies continuously all day, that's going to shorten up, but pff, I sometimes just throw another, another, another dropper in there, another knot in there, and keep them relatively short, because the longer they are, the more prone they are to tangling, as far as I'm concerned. I find that that works perfectly well for me. And, yeah, it works for me, and that's all that really matters, I suppose. Confidence is another thing. Confidence is everything in fishing. So there you go, that's the, the leader set up. Let me show you how to tie that full, that full blood knot. I know there's a lot of you guys that this is like second nature to you, but there's a lot of guys out there that, that just don't know how to do it. So I'm gonna show you. So I'm using two different colored uh, lines for this demonstration, just to give you, so you can see what I'm actually doing. This one, the pink one, is the main line coming from your rod. And what we're doing, we're gonna cross it over Lengthen it to the side, the length that you want your dropper to be, which is around about eight to ten inches. And then with this one, we're going around five times one, two, three, four, five, and back through the hole that you've made. Pull it tight, pull that tight. And this is the tricky bit is the transition over from holding it with this hand. To the next hand so you're just pulling it across and keeping all of it together it takes a bit of getting used to this knot but once you've mastered it it is worth it trust me and then we're going around with the main line around the second bit which is one two three four five and back through the opposite way so that they're both not coming out the same side now this is the bit i suppose that um everybody struggles with, with because you've now got to pull it all tight in one go. I use my mouth. I'm pulling it tight there. And then with these two, I'm getting to that stage. So that it's not pulled tight, properly tight yet. Because what I want to do is just put a little bit of saliva on it. I suppose with the COVID and the health and safety, that's probably not the best thing to do, but it's the only way to do it that I know. And now pull it tight. Putting that saliva on it is just not gonna burn the line and uh, end up in a breakage. 
trim the yellow one back, leave a little bit sticking out, just a tad. Because if you haven't pulled that line properly tight, when something does pull on that, it gives you that option, that just that little bit of security to, so that it just, just won't snap. It'll just, just shorten that little small bit up and, and just won't snap. So now we've got our dropper, which is yeah, around about eight inches long. Now the reason we've done it like that and the way we've got it, as you can see, it sticks out from the side. When you do the four turn water knot, it lays the whole length of it there. And I'm not saying that when you've got that in the water, it doesn't lay next to it when you're pulling it fast, because it will do. But when you've got a dry fly set up, it will stick out and sit away from the rest of the line, in my view. Now the other thing is you've got multiple flies on, so you're doing that knot three times or twice or however many droppers you want on. I quite often use four flies on a washing line scenario. I won't use any more than three on a dry fly setup. But if you do get two fish on at the same time, this obviously being your main line, and that's the, that's the line you've got your fly on. If this one breaks, which is quite possible with two fish on at the same time, you've still got this one which is on your main line. So you're always guaranteed you're going to catch one fish at least. If you did it the opposite way around, that would snap there and the whole lot would be gone. So that's how you tie your full blood knot. So I'm just going to uh, show you how to attach the, the leader to the fly line. Everybody uses, well, I say everybody, most people are using these braided loops nowadays, which you can buy pretty much anywhere. So you've got your braided loop attached and then all you're doing is just attaching your leader, my leader will go straight through now on the dry fly uh, setup with six pound full in mill. And all you're doing is attaching that the same way as you would attach a hook. There's no difference at all. Um, but my way of doing it is I'm sure the same as everybody else's. So you're going through, through the, uh, the loop, around the, the line five times. Five. and then back through the hole that you've made. I used to always put it back through that hole again as a double security, but um, remember Dave Shipman showing me this demonstration years ago in one of our club matches. So it's just once through. And again, once you get to that stage, just a bit of saliva on there, pull it tight, and that's you. Trim it off. Dead simple, but a lot of people don't know these knots, so you know, hence that's why we do them. There's a great variation in dry flies, and I've selected a few here just to show you. Um, this first one is a Shipman's Buzzer, developed by Dave Shipman himself, of course. Uh, I think he developed it in Rutland, uh, Rutland and Grafham originally. Sugar Cube Buzzer, very, very uh, successful fly. CDC Coldy Canard. Um, which in French stands for duck's arse because it's the preen feathers from a duck. Very, very buoyant fly uh, feathers and that's obviously why it's tied in there and it sits up on the surface here. And it's very easy to see and then the, the rest of the fly is obviously just below the surface. One of my favourites is a hopper. So you can fish that dry or you can fish that wet, which is exactly the same as the Midas, similar sort of fly in the respect of how you fish it. Midas is a much bigger fly than normally than, uh, than a hopper. Um, John Horsey loves these flies at uh, Chew. Um, but uh, yeah, very, very successful fly. Parachute dry, which is tied onto a post. So you've got a post in the center there, and then the hackle is tied around it so that it sits onto the surface dry. Foam bodied daddy, very, very good fly for later in the year. This is a snail pattern, which is tied out of black deer's hair. Now, again, with deer's hair, it's very um, waterproof. So that fly, I normally do gink it, but it will just sit on the surface anyway. And is a great pattern when they're on the snails. Detached body daddy, again, great fly for later in the year. So that's the selection of some of the dries that I use. These would be my three go-to flies really on any uh, trout water I went on at any time of the year. But it's somewhere like Grafham or Rutland, you've got a nice overcast day and a light ripple. 
I'd start off with these three. You're not going to go wrong. You've got a size 10 Midas on the point, a size 10 big red, and a 12 hopper, little red hopper on the top dropper. Of course, it depends on what the, the hatch is. If there's other things hatching off, then you may want to change those flies. But I promise you, using those three flies is going to catch your fish at some point. We hope you found these demos helpful. Dry fly fishing is only as difficult as you want to make it. If you stick to these simple guidelines, I'm sure it will help your confidence and your catch rate. Thanks for joining us. We truly appreciate your input. So if you've got any ideas for any future videos, leave them down here for us. And if you haven't done already, push that subscribe button. Thanks for joining us today. We hope to see you again soon and tight lines.